Welcome back everyone to the Collector Channel. Today we'll be checking out a Babe Ruth baseball card collection. Um, these are all from his playing days. So these cards are from 1915. We have a 1915 card of his and we have all the way up to 1935 and a bunch in between. Um, so it's not just these cards you see here, but it's all of these cards, these graded PSA and SGC Babe Ruth cards we will be checking out in this video. Let's start out with this card first, everyone. This is a 1933 Uncle Jack's Candy Babe Ruth card, graded PSA 2. And PSA 2 of this card is actually considered a high grade because in PSA population report, I think the highest grade is a 2.5. So I think SGC has maybe a 6.5 out there. But um, for this card, there's not really any high grade examples or very few. Um, so here's the blank back to it and then the front again. Very nice card um, from 1933 so kind of ending near the end of his career. Still very successful. I mean 1933. This also is the same year that he had the popular four Gaudi cards out. Um, this is much rarer though with populations. Total graded for PSA. I believe under 10 and same with SGC. So there's not many graded. Let's move on to this next. This is the Eclipse Import Babe Ruth. And it actually looks like they might have used or gotten this image from that image, possibly. All right, so yeah, 1933 again, same with the Uncle Jacks. Um, this one is a hand cut card. I believe these came in a vertical strip, um, possibly a vertical strip. Card number 402. Um, also, there was not as far as I know, 400 plus cards in the set. I think they started the numbering kind of different at a higher number for whatever reason. And this is a neat card actually. It, it's different. It's definitely different. It has this cartoonish image of Babe Ruth yeah, and there's the number 402 in the back. And there's some good reading back there. I enjoy reading these cards, the back of them. Um, this is this is one of a series of 24 cards. So yeah, there's 24 cards in the set. Yet it starts at 402. So that's kind of interesting. Next up, we have the 1923. So we're going back 10 years to 1923 for the Maple Crispet Babe Ruth. Um, this is definitely considered an earlier card of Babe Ruth. Me personally, I kind of think really all of his 20s cards are early in his career, but. Definitely anything pre-1925 would be, in my opinion, um, an early Yankees card or earlier in his career. And then definitely in the teens, like 1915, 1916, 17, are very early when he was on the Boston Red Sox. Um, but back to this card, this is card number eight. Given a PSA 5 grade, a very nice card. I definitely think it's deserving of the grade. Um, not many have graded this high. This is one of the higher graded. I don't think it's the highest, but it's up there and really cool back to it too. Looks like you could collect these cards and trade them in for some sporting goods equipment. And this is a Canadian issue also, the Maple Crispet. Um, there's some really cool Canadian issues out there and this is one of them. And next up, we have another Canadian issue. This is the 1924 Willard Chocolate Babe Ruth Sports Champions. Um, I believe there was not only baseball players in this set, I think there was other athletes also included in this set. Um, there's also a 1923 Willard Chocolate Babe Ruth card. Both are very rare. Um, the 1923 does look a bit different. They're really completely different looking cards but both from Canada. Um, this is the PSA 5 and it's also a blank back so it's interesting how there's a blank back and the size of it too. It seems to be close to similar width of a T206 card but definitely taller. Um, so pretty cool looking card there like how it says home run champion on it. Next up we'll check out these two these are from 1935, so 1935 is when Babe Ruth played for the Braves, the Boston Braves, um, went back to Boston for his last year of baseball, and 
I believe these are pronounced is it Shutter or Shooter Johnson, Shutter Johnson, yeah. Um, super cool cards, they're unique, they're different. Um, and there's two Babe Ruth cards in the set. There's number 26 over here and number 42 on the left, both within the same set. Uh, one's showing how to grip the bat, Babe Ruth's grip. You know, there's the choke grip where he's choking up on the bat there and that grip. And then also how to pitch to left-hand batter. And it does say Babe Ruth on the card. I, I like both of these cards. Um, and three and above, hard to find. Not many PSA 3s or 4s. They're very hard to find in that condition. Also the back. Some good reading on the back there. So it looks like these are from Chicago and Brooklyn. I'll zoom in so everyone can take a closer look at this. And it's showing the Major League Secrets, which I think is pretty cool. Just the, you know, some of the secrets they're saying on here of how to grip the bat or how to pitch to a left-handed batter. It's interesting. So now what we'll do is grab from this top pile here. We'll grab these two carefully. I like to keep my PSA and SGC cases um, in good condition with as few scratches as possible. I just don't like all the scratches some of the cases get on there. So a lot of times I'll use like a protective sleeve to go over the case. Because a lot of times it's, you know, when you get a scratch on a case, sometimes it's hard to say, is this scratch on the case or the card? And just kind of, I don't know, I don't like how it makes the card look sometimes. Anyway, this is a 1934 Babe Ruth. It's from a Japanese department store. Um, extremely, extremely rare. This is from the days of the tour of Japan, 1934. The big tour um, that there's been books made about and um, just very popular with Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, and many others. Um, not many of these known. These are, again, extremely, extremely rare. There's the back, it's a blank back, has a little bit of writing on it, um, just right there, which I think adds to this card actually. I believe it's a Japanese surname on there, and here's a close-up of the image of Babe Ruth, and this image has been used several other times. Um, this is a unique card though in itself, not the image, but some of the other things on the card make it unique and where it came from and when it came from. Um, also, this image was used later in Babe Ruth's life when he would hand out photographs or postcards of himself with this image and he'd autograph them and send them to fans in the mail. Um, so what makes this card unique, what else, is this logo right down there. And then I think this is really cool too, this is Sincerely Babe Ruth. As far as I know, I mean that's not an autograph. It's um, just printed on there. It was already on there. It's a part of the card. Um, that would be extra awesome if that was an autograph, but still looks really cool on the card. So everyone can get one more look at that. And we'll go with another larger card. This one is the 1915 Boston Red Sox Babe Ruth Team Postcard. Given a grade of PSA 3.5, very high grade of this card. And as you can see, there's Babe Ruth right there in the middle. And this is when he was a pitcher for the Red Sox. And definitely considered a rookie card of his, even though it's a postcard. I think a lot of collectors are beginning to like postcards just because of the image size is bigger and can be a little bit more quality in some ways, but traditional size baseball cards are always going to be super popular in my opinion and um, the big thing to collect. So here we have a 1922 E121 American Caramel Babe Ruth. This is the photo montage series of 120. So with a lot of these early Caramel cards, 1921, 1922, there is the series of, whether it's series of 80 or series of 120, but within those sets, there's a lot of different variations, so really making it difficult to collect the set. Definitely not impossible, but very difficult, a big challenge to collect the sets because of all the variations. 
Um, they're very slight variations. It could be different uniform color. Um, it could be one saying manager, or it could just be MGR for manager. Um, there's the George Ruth, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth in quotations. These are from 1921, by the way. Um, so just tons of different variations to collect and makes it really fun to collect. Anyway, back to this card. Um, I really like the American Carmel cards of Babe Ruth and just in general. They're really neat cards. I like the back to them. Uh, Lancaster, New York, Pennsylvania. Just really fun to collect. An awesome image. Very clear. Um, we'll set that aside. Let's move next to a hand cut strip card. So this is a 1923 W515-2 Beirut number 47. Um, this is the highest graded I believe or you know things changed last time I checked it was but who knows if it still is. It's a very high grade card of this card either way. Um, it says the little on top. There are variations to this card where it doesn't say that on top. There's also, this one just happens to be the blank back but there are some out there. Um, very few that have the FLIR, FLIR um, back to it. So there's a few different variations of that card or using that image. Um, I guess I don't know if they'd be considered variations. And same with this card. There's a Wool's American Made Bread card, I believe. Back to this card. This happens to be the blank pack. Um, this is the 1921 W551 Babe Ruth graded PSA 6. A uh, really nice card, clear image, it says Babe Ruth Yankees in the bottom. Uh, really nice card. And I actually like these new PSA cases too. I like that logo or the label on there. It looks really cool. Alright, next here. So this is Babe Ruth and Harold Lloyd. Um, PSA 6. 1931 card and fairly rare I know there's like the Bulgaria Babe Ruth and some other European cards and some from Germany from those days that there's been a lot that have been discovered but that's still um, the card I just showed you is still pretty rare and there's fairly low population alright next up we have let me just angle this up a bit here the Collins McCarthy Babe Ruth, this is a PSA Poor to Fair 1MK. Having this card really in any grade is awesome in itself. Whether it's this or if it's a 3 or a 4 or whatever the grade. It's just a rare card to have. Um, this card does have a tiny bit of writing at the bottom left, but really not a huge deal. The image of Babe Ruth is still very clear. Um, there's really, I don't see any disruption of it. Um, so, yeah, the MK doesn't really bother me too much. And especially what I like about this card is, I mean, okay, he's in the Red Sox uniform, which is awesome. But how cool is that? It says at the very bottom there, Boston Red Sox. And there's a P for pitcher. So pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. How rare and awesome is that? That's just super rare. And really, I like everything about this card. Um, so the front's cool, and the back is really extra cool, I guess. I don't know what the word would be. It's super awesome, that back. Um, the Collins McCarthy logo down there, and just everything about it. San Francisco, California, Candy Company. I mean, everything about this card is awesome. Again, one of my favorite cards out there ever made. So put that aside. Um, let's go to another early Babe Ruth card. So we're going to a bunch of early Ruth cards here. This is the Sporting News M101-4. Um, has the uh, Sporting News back to it. Again, another Boston Red Sox. Early Ruth, very early, his rookie card. Um, we did show you that postcard just a little bit ago from 1915. Um, that was a team postcard, but, you know, the 1916 is of Ruth by himself. Alright, next up we have this 1933 uh, T.A. Briggs Company Babe Ruth card in a PSA 3. Um, 
last time I checked again, highest graded. I don't know if it still is. These are very, very rare cards from 1933. Has the image of Babe Ruth swinging and then the back. All right, next. Okay, so we have these next, W502s. Both look the same, which they are pretty much the same. These are hand cut, um, which they don't really show any evidence of being hand cut. They don't look like a typical hand cut card. But anyway, the back, two bagger, one bagger, one bagger, two bagger. Um, there's a three bagger, there's a blank back, and there's hold what you got or keep what you got. So there's different variations, back variations to these. Um, next up, let's go to a W573 Babe Ruth. Very similar to the 1922 E120 American Carmel Babe Ruth. Um, the image is the same where it's Babe Ruth holding a ball. And this one just happens to be the W573 is lighter. Uh, it has almost white borders to it, so lighter than the American Carmel Ruth. Also a blank back. And there is actually a 1922 E120 American Caramel Babe Ruth blank back out there. Um, it does look just like this, but just has a blank back to it. And it's a PSA 1. Um, this one is the E120 American Caramel Babe Ruth with the New York Yankees Americans back. I mean, this is the traditional back. I haven't seen any variations to this back. And next up, this is a hand cut card. This is from 1920, so right about when Ruth came over to the Yankees. Um, so W519 1, card number 5. These are hard to get with a numerical grade, so most of them are authentic. So that's why I picked this one up. It was a numerical grade, it measured out really nicely. Um, the color, the focus, the cut on it was pretty nice so I figured hey this is a nice card to get and you can see kind of the blue peeking through on the side so they actually had one of these that looked very similar it's the W519 but without the dash one and it has a blue background to it um, and there's some other differences too so I think that's pretty cool and it's a blank back all right next up we have another hand cut card um, this is the 1921 W516-2-2, card number 10, Babe Ruth, SGC3. Has a really cool pitching pose, says pitcher on the bottom right, and Yanks. I think that's just neat how it says Yanks and pitcher because most of them will say outfield. You know, they don't really say Yankees and pitcher, so um, I think that's really neat. And it shows him throwing. And it's interesting he's throwing with his right hand. I don't know if any of you have noticed that before, but there are other versions that have him throwing with his left hand. So different variations that, again, are fun to collect. A blank back there. Uh, next up, Nielsen's Chocolate Type 1. And there's the back to that. Another really nice back to that card. There's a Type 2 of this card that has more of a American Caramel kind of looking back to it. Um, this back is pretty special and unique, really. I haven't seen much of anything else out like it. Um, next up, we have an ice cream card, Harrington's Ice Cream Bay Ruth PSA 3. There's the advertising back there. Um, there's 60 cards within this set. And the next two I'll show you are also um, similar. This is Tharps, very rare, 1928 Babe Ruth Tharps ice cream, PSA 2. And this looks quite a bit better than a 2 in my opinion. There's a little bit of creasing on there. Very, very nice card. Um, card number 6, again, 60 cards within this series also. Similar looking back to the other one. And then there's the York. Carmel. This is a year earlier, 1927. So I think York Carmel kind of set the pace for this 
and they came up with this card using that older uh, Babe Ruth Red Sox pitching pose, which would probably have been about 10 years prior to this. But they used this, and then the other ice cream companies, candy companies, came out and used the same image within their um, set and used it as a premium. So this is the Type 1 PSA 3. Pretty nice card, extremely rare. And let's check out the back. So all the backs look a little bit different. Um, this one, I like this back. It's uh, 60, again, 60 cards within this set. It says York Carmel Company, York, Pennsylvania, 1927, which was a huge year for Babe Ruth. Very huge year, which makes this all the more special. And our last card to check out is this Image of Babe Ruth Stamps card. Now this stamp is kind of debatable because a lot of people don't think this really is Babe Ruth or an image of Babe Ruth on here, which I agree. It doesn't really look like Babe Ruth because I did some research on it and the pitching windup is appears to be different than Babe Ruth's. Um, so we'll see in the future if PSA decides to relabel this card or if they change it in any way. Um, now let's say if it really is Babe Ruth and it's from 1917, that makes it rare and a very early card of Babe Ruth, which should be more valuable than it really is. Um, even though it's a stamp, I, I think it would be uh, really neat to have an early stamp of Babe Ruth for the Boston Red Sox. But really, I don't think this is Babe Ruth on here. But it is still a part of the collection because it says Babe Ruth on the PSA label, so we're keeping it a part of the collection for now. Um, so there it is. Well, that is it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.